What's up guys, the Penfeds here and welcome back to another episode of Draft to Glory. Today's draft is going to be post combed I'll explain why in a second. But first of all, welcome to the video. If you could drop a thumbs up, it would be much appreciated. As you can see, we've got 81,829 coins up in the top left. We've got a record of 18 wins and 8 losses. It should be a lot better than that. I've been really letting myself down a lot recently. Um, as especially and specifically due to the fact that of the first five episodes, we made the final five times, um, only winning it once, which was very disappointing. Um, however, you can see a lot of the stuff did sell, a lot of the stuff didn't sell. I went through and discarded some things, I relisted the other items. And what I want to talk about is my draft luck on top of, um, on top of whilst we're drafting, me kind of analysing my draft post-com whilst I was doing it live because I actually did record this live and the reason why this is post-com is because my PC updated uh, yesterday um, and you would have seen in yesterday's video the squad building challenge the audio quality was horrendous I had a road to glory where the um, the uh, face cam didn't record and I've been having a lot of problems recently where either my face cam or my Elgato software is just coming through corrupt and the face cam for this portion of the video did indeed um, did indeed come through corrupt so i'm gonna have to re-record it and it's it sucks with draft of glory because the draft section being live is really important because i talk about a lot of different things uh whilst i'm drafting why i take specific players who i you know who i want to pop and we discussed in this video here which obviously you don't get to see chem styles because somebody pointed out to me the other day um he actually emailed me and, and showed me two pictures of the same draft of mine in the same video um, the chem styles change, and I don't know when and I don't know how, but they change. Um, so uh, basically, the draft that he showed me, Gareth Bale started with a shadow and finished with a hunter, and like six or seven of the players changed. So be wary, A, when drafting yourself and picking players, expecting them to have certain chem styles, but also when you finish your drafts or through the draft, have like get, get a pen and paper next to you. Write down the player that you pick in their chem style on each of the 23, you know, the 23 picks. And then once the draft is completed, before you go into your first game, just check off and see which one's the same and if any have changed. Because it'll be interesting to see what changes and why it changes. Somebody came back with a bit of information yesterday. Um, they, they, met, they spoke to the EA chat support and uh, the EA chat support. Now, I don't ever trust what the EA chat support have to say because I feel like they... They're, they're not FIFA based. Uh, a couple of them, some every now and then you'll chat to one of them and they know what FIFA is and they actually play it and they understand what you're trying to get out to them. But more often than not, they're reading off of a script. Oh, like customer has error, this is the response. And they don't actually know what you're saying. So when the, the guy that contacted them said that his chem styles changed, the, the EA help guy said that asked him if they had ever played for the manager that they had in the team. And he said that the manager gives synergy boosts to players that have played under them previously. Now, EA have never released any information to back this up or confirm this. However, it could potentially be there. So although I don't, I don't personally believe that to be true, it's definitely going to be something that will be interesting to have a look at and, and look into. Now, for this draft here, um, the, for the drafts right now, um, in my opinion, it's really important to get a good balance in your team and a strong formation. Right now, for me personally, I don't know what my favourite formation is this year. Um, you know, we're three, four weeks into the game. I've, I've used the 4-1-2-1-2 quite a lot. I've used the 4-3-2-1 quite a lot. I've used the 3-5-2 to varying degrees of success through the draft to glory. Um, but ultimately, I, I, can't, I can't find what is working for me personally. And when you look at the uh, leaderboards at the end of Foot Champions, the top 100, the main formation used are the 4-1-2-1-2, the 4-1-2-1-2-2, the 4-3-3, the 4-3-2-1, and the 4-2-3-1 wide, not narrow. Um, so there's about five different formations there that are relevant, but most of them tend to have wingers and a cam, a bear, other than the 4-3-3, which obviously also does have the wings. Actually, it does even have a cam, doesn't it? So it seems like the common denominator for a successful team is wingers and a cam. Um, which is why for me personally when I did win the draft with the 3-5-2 I wonder if that's because I had wingers and a cam and it, like a lot of people look at formations as a whole as overpowered But I wanted to go a different step this year 
and look at, like I said, like comparing positions that are important in the teams and seeing if all of them fit the need. Now, the only one that doesn't fit the need is the 4-3-2-1. It has two wingers or forwards, but I, when I say wingers, I literally mean left mid, right, left wing or left forward, right mid, right wing or right forward. So when you're comparing all of those formations that are success, the 4-1-2-1-2 has wingers and a cam. The 4 one 2 one 2 2 doesn't have wingers but does have a cam the 433 a variant of it does have a cam and wingers a variant of it doesn't have a cam but does have wingers the 4321 has wingers but no cam and i'm wondering if you know the 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 like I say the common denominator i wonder if the common denominator is the fact that if you have wingers and a cam you're giving yourself a best best possibility to win because maybe they're the overpowered positions this year and I don't necessarily mean in terms of straight goal scoring. For me, my striker scores the most goals this year. Last year, it was probably my cam that got the the best, you know, the best goal to to gain ratio for me, unless I forced it to a striker. Um, but this year, the strikers score a lot of goals. But because of the way the triangle passing works in this year's FIFA, I'm wondering if having the like right now in this formation, because we've got Neymar in at cam, he's got five players around him: the two strikers, the two wingers, the CDM. The left mid Pedro has got four players like connected to him: the the left striker, the cam, the CDM, and the left back. The CDM's got five players around him, and the same on the right hand side. I wonder if because there's so many options for the players to pass to, that passing triangles are so much more effective in formations that have more links going into them. So it might be something to uh, to to look forward to throughout the year as to how formations work and why. Um, for me personally, this draft started off pretty decent. It didn't go crazy good, but it started off pretty decent. I ended up uh, taking a little bit of a mix of La Liga and BPL. I was very happy to go either way. I wasn't really getting the players to perfectly fit the needs of what I had going on. In hindsight here, I should have probably taken a BPL goalkeeper. I know I already had Carrius, but there was a couple of really good options there. Bravo and uh, Mandanda. And uh, as we go through, as Pil Equator here was a huge pull for me because obviously we've got Pedro on the left-hand side, same club, same league, same nation, gets that hyperlink and boosts up the team chemistry. But I wanted to talk as well briefly, whilst we're watching the, uh, the, the end of the draft here, I wanted to talk about um, my profit within the draft and if, if I'm getting lucky or if I'm getting so unlucky that it's actually working in my favour. And this will make sense in a second. So... Basically, if you win the draft or if you get to the final, you get the best coin value pack rewards. There are certain rewards that are incredible. You can get 100k pack, 45k coins, 50k pack. You can get 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45,000 coins as just a coin reward. You can even get coins for losing. Somebody tweeted me yesterday and I hear JTunes as well got a 50k pack and 25,000 coins for losing in the final. So in you know some rewards are amazing, but some people have unbelievably bad luck in their rewards at the end. Inception and A9 skills being two of those people. Inception regularly gets the worst prize. He wins the draft so many times and so comfortably that it's an absolute mind mind boggle that he hasn't had a coin reward yet as his reward. What he tends to get is either the 25 and 35k pack or the 225ks and 25k packs, which are just garbage. And A and I skills very much the same. A and I skills can't get 50k or 100k pack to save his life. He can't get coins. So these guys win the draft a considerable amount. And because their rewards aren't the high-end rewards for winning, what they get in the packs aren't really good enough to get the money back because so many gold players don't sell. And specifically rare golds, common golds at times are more expensive than rare golds because of squad building challenges and people don't look past the common versus rare. Like right now, for example, in the League of Nos squad building challenges for that Jonas, you can get a right wing from one of the clubs who's shiny and gold for 800 coins, but people opt for the silver version because you know the mind says silver less than gold must be cheaper and the silver right wing is going for like 8,000 coins. You could just put the gold dude in there, it's the same thing. So when you're getting all these high rated gold players or these, these gold players that are shiny in your reward packs for winning, they don't always have a high value unless they're from a major league or a major nation or unless they're entirely relevant to a squad building challenge. For example, there are 84 rated players like uh, William Carvalho um, and uh, there's another 84 rated player, I can't remember who, who literally are discard value. Like they go for 650 to 700 coins as an 84 rated. Next up, you could consider some of the packs that I've been getting where I open a pack and I'll get a silver Korean guy that sells for 10K. So there is an argument to be made 
that winning the draft, and if you if you win the draft and get a low tier prize, you're probably going to be worse off than if you lost in the second or third round and got packs to to reward you with consumables and low tier players because they're actually higher valued on today's transfer market, which for me is interesting because a nice skills has played more drafts than me and won far, far more drafts than me. I've only won one so far out of nine episodes, which is, is regardless of what's gone on where, that's bad. And that's me just struggling to adjust to the game and, and trying to figure out uh, you know what what formation works best, what play style works best, what players suit my play style best. You know it's going to take me a, a huge adjustment period to get to a point where I feel like I'm comfortable winning every draft again. But AA has, has slotted right in. He was ranked number one in the world briefly last weekend's foot champions. He was ranked number twenty in the world this week's foot champions. You know he's getting elite every time. He's 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 a he's a much better player than me at this stage in the year, and uh, I'm happy for him because if you know I I, lo I love it when my YouTube friends get the the good rewards and such. Um, but he's basically, he's played more drafts than me and won more drafts than me. And his total coin balance right now, and if you watch his Draft of Glory and don't want to know this, this will be a spoiler, so please mute me for the next five or eight seconds. His total coin value right now is 136,000. We right now have a whole bunch of stuff on the trade pile. We have 81,000 coins in the bank and we have this as a free draft token to the value of 15,000. So regardless of what happens in today's episode, even if we make like the minimal profit that we're going to be making, which would be like seven to 10,000 coins plus what's on the trade pile, we will be well over 100,000 coins and I've only won it once out of nine attempts. So I've, I've won it considerably less and AA finishes in the final. He, he either gets to the final or wins it every single time. So I've won it considerably less and got far, far worse rewards. Yet in less drafts, I have nearly as much money. That's crazy. And, and that, that for me shows EA's good side. They're, they're, they're really putting thought into the whole circle of markets because there are four game modes that you've got right now. You've obviously got foot draft, you've got foot champions, you got squad building challenges and you got divisions. Okay, you got the daily knockouts and singles, but they don't really count, right? So you can play divisions, gets you division one win, gets you fifteen thousand coins. You can then win division one, uh, so you can use that fifteen thousand coins to go into the draft, or you can use it to build your team. The draft is giving out much better rewards this year, which is amazing, and the players have a higher value, which gives value to your fifteen thousand coins. Because last year, what was happening was. I, I was I won the draft last year about 15 times in a row late on in the year and I don't think I made money on more than three of those drafts because the prizes were just, although the prizes in themselves were good, you know, 50k packs and 35k packs, consumable and player prices were so, like, literally rock bottom that you would be lucky to make your 15,000 coins back even if you won the draft. This year, because of squad building challenges, removing players from the market and requiring... Uh, obscure players to, to give them value and because of foot champions where everybody wants to play with their best team and need consumables, uh, fitness cards, injury cards to, to keep those teams fresh throughout the 40 games, it gives value, like true value in my opinion to packs. So even if you lose in the first or second round of a draft, what you're going to have is a pack that is going to be most likely containing a player of value. And even if it doesn't contain a player of value, that player in the future could have a value. Right now I have uh, three or four silver cards on my trade pile. I'm listing them up. What I should be doing it because I don't need the coins now. You know, the two, three hundred coins that they'll give me right now isn't really that worth it. So what I should be doing is sending those silver players to the club because one of them's a Mexican from the Mexican League. I guarantee you at some point during this year, the Mexican League will require a squad building challenge where that player is going to have a high value. So instead of me selling him for 200 coins, I should save him in my club. And when he has a five to 10,000 value, I can sell him and we would have made even more profit from that specific draft that we got him from. So draft is definitely a good way to, um, to spend your money on. And when I say money, I, I've shown already in Draft of Glory this year that you can be successful through draft. You can make profit through draft. All we did was got our first 15,000 coins. We're now at a point where we've got 100,000 coins, give or take. I'll, I'll be very, very unlucky to run out of coins at this stage, right? Which means Draft of Glory again for this year is just going to be a huge success, which is great. I love it. If you know, Last year we ended up with like a million 200,000 coins. So the aim this year is to beat that, is to get more than 1.2 million coins. 
um, you know, maybe 1.5 million coins, maybe 1.8 million coins, maybe 2 million coins just from playing the draft. But what is to note is, if you spent just FIFA points on the draft and not the coins to enter the draft, and you'll see this a lot in the outro, and, and that hence the reason the video is titled as such it is, is that I would have a quarter of a million coins for only 3,000 FIFA points. Now, if you open 3,000 FIFA points worth of packs, you're looking at 27.5k packs, which would have, in my opinion, a value of five to 10,000 coins a pack. You'd be looking at about 100 to 200,000 coins. I've got quarter of a million coins if I, if I did FIFA points with this instead of coins, and I haven't even done good to get that. You know what I mean? Like, if I'd got to the final a few more times, or if I'd got luckier packs a few more times, if I'd got one reward where I got given 45,000 coins for winning the draft, or you know, if I got 25,000 coins for losing in a draft final, I would have even more. So it seems like one of the most relevant things to do this year, if you have the time, is to buy FIFA points, don't spend it on packs, instead spend it on the draft, and see where you can go with it. Now, into our third game for today, guys, we come up against a really, really nice team. Nolito, Suarez, Bale, fantastic. Ibora and Casemiro are really good. Um, Kevin De Bruyne is amazing. His defense is a bit eh, but it's not bad. As Pilaqueta is good, uh, Adela Rami is good, his goalkeeper is good. It's just the center back and the right back that I was a bit shifty on. But what I've done in this video is left in a lot of my chances that I missed. Now, this may be a moot point because EA have just released a patch update for the game which I'm hoping is going to resolve a lot of my problems. Um, I'll, I'll, obviously, I'll find out. But the reason why I left these in and what I talked about later on in the video, because I've obviously had to post-record this now because the face cam didn't work, um, I, I struggle to score and I don't know why. So what I've done here, guys, is left some of my chances in that I thought were good goal-scoring opportunities that I would consider should be goals. And because they didn't end up being goals, I want you guys to look at them and say, suggest to me what I could potentially have done different or what you would have done in the same situation as me. Now, don't mind my defence. My defence at times is just absolutely shocking. I'm working on my defence. I know I'm not the best defender and I know if I could improve my defence quite a lot, it would make me a considerably better player. Unfortunately, I let in some weak goals at times. It's just, you know, I always have done and I, I, although I'm trying to rectify those errors, I probably always will do. But so many times I get into good spots. Like here, I press the shoot button, the keeper makes a wonder save. You know, I'm, I'm getting into positions over and over again where I'm thinking this should be a goal and then it's just not. Like here, cut it across the Welbeck. I, I press shoot there, you can see the bar move up and he just chests it out of play. Now in those instances, it might just be like, hey, that's just unlucky, like the game screwed you there, not a lot you can do. Like, you know, you pinged it in at him, it's hit his chest, it's flown off of him. On another day that might go in, on the, you know, today it didn't, but there are quite a few chances in here where I'm like, okay, what, what should I have done differently and what could I have done differently? We do end up getting one goal back with Danny Welbeck, bringing the scoreline to 4-1. And it wasn't a game that I was blown out in in terms of chances or possession or anything, but it was a game that I was blown out in terms of scoreline. We get Messi in through here. I do the low-driven shot across. I hit the rebound. I, can't, I, just, I don't know what to do there. I don't know how I could have made that go in the back of the net. I had a defender pressing me, so I had to take the early shot. I, I just don't know what's going on. So if you guys want to let me know, if you guys want to give me any tips, any advice, feel free in the comments section below. Uh, that is the end of the gameplay, though, guys. We did end up taking a pounding on the scoreline of 4-1. As you can see by the match stats, even possession, my passing was better. My shots were actually from better areas in and around the box compared to most of his being long shots. I just didn't manage to put the ball in the back of the net, which is a me thing. I know it's a me thing, so I need to get better in that area. But this, guys, is going to be the end of the gameplay. Hopefully, we can get something good in our semi-final exit packs. So let's go take a look. So guys, we end up going out in the semi-final today. I just cannot score, can I? I'm horrendous. I put in a lot of my uh, goal-scoring opportunities into today's game to hopefully get some advice from you guys. Um, my defense is, is as shaky as ever. The defense isn't really a problem. I conceded a lot of goals today because I went ultra-attacking towards the end to try and get back into the game. Um, I feel like my, in the third game, I feel like my opponent's first goal was just ridiculous. I don't know what my keeper was doing. He was on the penalty spot when the guy took the shot. Why is he there? I don't know. Anyway, um, yeah, as I say, I've I put, I put in a whole bunch of, um, whole bunch of, of my chances that I missed. If you guys got any advice on what I could have done differently, different shot choices, different path patterns, different run patterns, 
just let me know in the comment section because I'm, I feel like I'm so close to being able to win draft after draft after draft, but in the last four or five episodes, we haven't even got to the final. So, you know, things aren't going as good as I would like them to. However, as we get a jumbo premium gold pack and a premium gold pack, we've got 90,000 coins. That's incredible. Um, that's genuinely incredible considering how bad we've been doing in the draft to be sat on 90k without taking in consideration these packs of which we've just got Raheem Sterling. I am just blown away by the profit you can make and the fact that we did just pack Sterling is crazy. I don't know how much he still goes for because the Man City thing isn't available anymore. That's unbelievable. That's mad profit. It looks like he's about 13, 14k which means again... I'll list him up for a 15k, see if he sells. Which means, again, we've made profit today. <laughs> That's absolutely unreal. Um, John O'Shea will sell. This guy will sell. The contracts and fitness cards will eventually sell. We'll send those up to the trade pile. Um, we're going to be over 100,000 coins today, guys. There's no two ways about it. We've got Jumbo Premium Gold Pack to go as well. After Raheem Sterling sells, we will be over 100,000 coins. And that is that. We also get ourselves the youth. In the pack now, he's not super high rated, but uh, hopefully we got maybe a league of NOS player. Oh, Moreno might be a, a decent player to sell. Um, Four thousand? Is he actually? No, he's being price fixed. There's no way he's four K, right? Yeah. So like, it looks like about another two. Yes, yeah, two thousand coins for Moreno, um, which is awesome. Um, have we got any players for squad building challenges here? I don't necessarily think so. Let's take a look at this Dominguez guy. And the reason why I say that is because I actually used this guy in a video today. So I think his price is going to have gone through the roof because I used him. Um, 1,300 coins looks to be his minimum buy now, which is insane. I say to people, don't use the players that I use because you're going to drive their price up. And they still do it. So I'm going to list this guy for 1,000 coins and we're going to make a K off of him, um, which is awesome. I'm going to send the rest of these dudes up to the trade pile. Uh, including the silver, including the contracts, and uh, all of them will sell for for a nice amount. Have we got any um, we got any La Liga players here? Because the La Liga right now has obviously got some some good stuff um, for players. Fitness card contracts, a CM to a CDM, an anchor card is quite nice. Um, I see that Chicago Fire badge and I get happy, but it's the kit. It's not a player. Uh, we've got the CM to CDM is what a thousand coins, five hundred coins. Um, guys, I'm honestly like. I am blown away by the fact that once again, we have made profit from the foot draft and not just any profit either. Wow, this is like 1,300 coins. We haven't just made any profit. Today, we've made about 20,000 coins. Um, and you might be thinking, wait, hold on, that doesn't that doesn't quite add up. But listen, we made 4,500 coins just off the gameplay alone. We're going to make 15,000 coins off of Raheem Sterling. That in itself puts us at 20,000 coins. So we're 5k in profit. On top of that, we made half, you know, 500 coins from the uh, the CM to the CDM. Then with all the other players that we've got available to us, the fitness cards, the contracts, the players, we're easily going to clean another 10 to 15,000 coins. The left wing to left mid, I don't believe this sells for much. No, this one's a 250 coin piece. But guys, another draft, more profit. I'm going to start throwing up Draft to Glory way, way more often. Because even though I'm losing in the first, second and third round quite consistently, I am still making obscene amounts of profit, which is just nuts. So yeah, Raheem Sterling in our pack today, he pays for the draft. I want to actually go on to, not into the club, I want to have a look at how much our trade profit is already because I think it might be over 100,000 coins. At least when Sterling sells. Our match earnings are 44,000. Our transfer profit is 100 and 96,000. Now, we've only played 29 games. How many drafts have we entered? I think we've entered... Is this Draft of Glory Episode 9, I believe, right? Um, let's have a look. Let's go to the drafts. Online draft. Draft history. 10 drafts. We've only won one. That's horrendous. I'm so bad at this FIFA. We've won one out of 10 drafts. We've reached five finals, which is, you know, that's actually pretty decent. Um, our goals conceded isn't too bad. Last year, it was way worse than that. It's just our goals scored that we're having problems with. We've won it once. We've entered it 10 times. But we've made the best... I'm going to call it 200,000 coins because once the stuff that sells sells, we will actually be well over 200,000 coins transfer profit. So our, tra our transfer profit right now, guys, the amount of coins that we've earned just through playing the draft is 200,000. Now, the reason why I say it like that is because... 
if you bought 12k FIFA points and just played the draft and didn't use your coins to enter the draft, you would have so far spent 3,000 of your 12,000 FIFA points and you would have around, with match earnings and transfer profit, 250,000 coins from 3,000 FIFA points. And I've only won it once. I'm doing as good as the average Joe, probably worse. So if you're a half decent FIFA player and you've got plenty of time and you enjoy the draft, just play it. You'll learn absolutely crap tons. But this, guys, is going to be the end of the video. If you did enjoy it, be sure to leave a like, rating, comment, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. But for now, guys, I'm out. Peace.